and i would invite gurvinder singh from the sikh community gurvinder and uh, he is going to give a summary a 5 minute summary about the different things that he has heard today gurvinder please thanks Wahiguru ji ka khalsa Wahiguru ji ki fateh First of all I would like to thank all of you have that have shown up what a beautiful gathering of different faiths of different nationalities of different beliefs I would like to thank the organizers in Unity Church for holding an event on difficult matter of a difficult subject I would like to start off by saying that after the Holocaust we heard the famous words of never again But to me it sounds like they should have said ever again because it has happened ever and ever and ever again. And we have allowed it to happen ever again. We have elected officials who have made it happen ever again. A Pol Pot of Cambodia rises. An Augusto Pinochet of Chile rises. Slobodan Milosevic of Bosnia Herzegovina wins in a landslide. Indira Gandhi enacts an emergency. and the congress party retakes the indian electric by a super majority even after her death because we are the silent majority when we allow these atrocities and these perpetrators to not only be elected but to continue on with their ideas and their philosophies of subjugation and tyranny which in turn leads to a phobia of a different people being scared of the other and blaming the the rot of a nation's decline on a few who were not me so it's not me the problem doesn't reside with me but it resides with you because you look different you speak different you act different so you must be the issue because i don't understand you and i don't care to either edmund burke a uh, Irish statesman in the 17th century stated that all that is necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing so that means that when evil prevails it is not it is not because someone of an evil mindset has taken a seat of authority If we are to take him literally it is because good men and good women have decided to stay silent. And we have decided to either turn away or we have decided to simply not care. A very popular quote during the Holocaust which is very prevalent is that first they came for the socialists. I was not a socialist so I stayed quiet. Then they came for the Jews, but I was not a Jew. So hey, my neighbor's house is on fire, it's okay, I'm safe. I stayed quiet. Then they came for the trade unionists. I was not a trade unionist, so I stayed quiet. But then they came for me. And now there is no one left to speak for me. How do we move on? as my brother mr gopal has stated by building these cohesive units of good men and good women but we cannot move on until there is an acknowledgement of the crimes and the genocide which has occurred against my people against the sikh nation in 1984 stores were marked with x's which belonged to sikhs women were raped on the streets children were put on barbecue grills and grilled alive men were put there were tires put around our necks and we were burned alive and the crowds would watch and say hey look at them doing pangra which is a dance and the hk opagats and the sajjan kumars and the jagdish tiglers and the kamalnaths are still walking free In fact they've been given beautiful positions within the government. They've been given accolades. There have been over 10 truth commissions set. 
CBI inquiries have been set. And what are the results? Oh, that nothing happened. Thousands of people killed in broad daylight while the police marched on. I was there in Haridwar, and I can still remember those days. And those people who committed those crimes are on TV and giving lectures about the progress of a nation. Those with whom, with their very hands, are responsible for the decimation of my people. The gall. But then, they have been elected because good men and good women have decided to do absolutely nothing. Because why? Because it doesn't matter to me. Until we get that mindset out of our minds in which every one of our faiths teaches us, every one of our faiths teaches us to do right to our neighbor, to live a life of dignity. Guru Nanak Sahib Ji says, who is our founder, that if you live a life of dishonor, then your life is completely filth. There is no use of your existence. It is pretty much, it is pretty much you live a life of non-existence if you live a life of dishonor. So my request to this beautiful gathering in summation is that just as our forefathers talked about the unalienable rights, but unfortunately, as we are well aware, they did not apply those rights to everybody. They left out the Native Americans. They left out the African Americans. They only discussed the unalienable rights because, you know, we're amongst the table. I think me and you should have the life, the, the, the ability to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But that right is unalienable, which means God has given us that right, not me, not you, but all of us. And if we walk with that lamp that God has blessed us with to carry the torch of freedom and social justice to all of our brothers and sisters, then we will truly ensure that a genocide or a massacre occurs never again. So I appeal to all of us at the very least that we in our own way in our own mechanisms, in our own outreach, ensure that we do not allow darkness to encircle us. It may encircle somebody else, but darkness will not encircle me. When darkness does not encircle me, then I will ensure who I meet is also full of light. <laughs> I request all of us to ensure that light, light encircles us, and then, and truly only then, can we say, Never again. Never again. Thank you once again. May God bless this gathering. Thank you, Governor. Thank you so much.